Thank you. Uh, fa fascinating, the stuff that, uh, that can be done. And, and you can also see the possibilities for product placement in medical dramas coming up in the years ahead as you uh, just imagine the natural way you can have these conversations. Uh, it is my pleasure now to introduce Mia Levy, the Director of Cancer Clinical Informatics at Vanderbilt's Ingram Cancer Center, to present My Cancer Genome. Welcome. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I'm excited to tell you about our program called My Cancer Genome, which has the goal of making genetically informed cancer medicine the next standard of care. As you're probably aware, cancer has been traditionally classified according to the part of the body uh, from which it arises, as well as how it looks under the microscope or its histology. So if you take melanoma, it's traditionally been classified according to the parts of the skin from which it arises. But in 2012, we are really looking at a much more complex landscape for classification of cancers. And with molecular subtyping, we're really able to target the therapies that are most likely to be effective for patients. So in July of 2010, the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center launched our personalized cancer medicine initiative with the goal of doing tumor gene mutation testing in our CLIA laboratory as part of standard of care for patients with melanoma and lung cancer. We had several challenges ahead of us, not the least of which was the way in which we present information to clinicians when they're making a clinical decision. And this is an example of a pathology report that you might see get scanned into the electronic health record. It is an image file, not computable, just a blob of text. You're not meant to be able to read this. Um, and it doesn't even contain any information on clinical trials the patient might be eligible for that would really make this new information about tumor gene mutation testing actionable for patient care. So what we did was in our, inside our electronic health record, um, you see I'm logged in and you're looking at a, a, a patient panel of test patients, and you see that uh, each patient is on a different row, and each gene is represented by a column. And there's six different genes in this particular panel, and if it's gray, there's no mutation detected, and if it's yellow, there's a mutation detected in that particular gene. And if I click on it, you'll see now um, discrete variables that show the particular BRAF mutations that were tested for and that this one was detected for this patient. But if you look really closely, and sorry if you have to look so closely, that um, these names are really strange. BRAF V600E, V600K, V600R. I don't care how good you are at memorization in medical school, you are never going to remember the clinical significance of each and every single one of these. And the challenge is, is that you do need to know which variant the patient had, because one mutation might confer sensitivity to a drug, and another mutation in the exact same gene might confer resistance to that same therapy. So clinicians need decision support to help them make the best of this new information. So directly from Vanderbilt's electronic health record, if you click on this gene that this patient has mutated, it takes you to a website called My Cancer Genome and to the specific site page uh, for that gene in this particular disease, BRAF, V6NRD, and melanoma. And it gives the clinician information about the properties of that gene, um, uh, drugs that it might be sensitive or resistant to, and general summary of information. And where available, we summarize the clinical literature um, and provide links to the primary articles so that the um, clinician can um, see that information. All of this information is available, um, is, is created through uh, literature curation by experts in the field. Uh, where we use publicly available cancer data is in our clinical trial search. So as linked directly from Vanderbilt's electronic health record, I can now see the clinical trials that are available at Vanderbilt that are looking at that particular gene mutation. And if we don't have a clinical trial available at Vanderbilt, I can find clinical trials available throughout the United States and the world. And what we've done is we've downloaded the National Cancer Institute's clinical trial registry called PDQ, and we've annotated it with gene associations. So I can click on here, and if I'm in Tennessee, um, find some additional trials that might be available for this patient, or let's just say I'm here in, in Maryland, not Kentucky. 
in Maryland, and I want to find another clinical trial for, the, for which this patient might be eligible, and I can click on this, and it takes me directly to clinicaltrials.gov, where I can look at the eligibility criteria and make a determination of whether or not this patient is eligible, and scroll down to find the locations where it's available here in Tennessee, and call the phone number right there to recruit my patient. In addition to linking this resource directly from Vanderbilt's electronic health record, we've also made it publicly available at www.mycancergenome.org. This is freely available to the public. A user can go and look up any one of nine different genes, diseases that we have annotated information for, any number of genes, BRAF, again, the exact same one I just showed you, the same variant that I just showed you, Presco, and you get the exact same information that was available through Vanderbilt's electronic health record, but now available to the public. We also have extended our search to include other cancers um, in the PDQ database, and you can search on any number of, of 135 cancer diagnoses. Here I'm searching on breast cancer and any number of cancer genes, um, one of 400 that we're currently annotating, let's say the BRCA1 gene, press go, and I can get clinical trials available throughout the world for those particular genes. I can restrict it by location. Let's just say here we are in, uh, in Maryland and Virginia, if, around the DC area, and again, look at the clinical trials that are available for triple negative breast cancer with a BRCA mutation. We are currently making this uh, service available through an API that we hope to have other electronic health records and clinical information systems, such as lab systems, use to help provide information on the clinical significance of tumor gene mutation testing. Since our launch in January of 2011, we've had amazing outpour pouring of support. We've had, in our first year, over 50,000 site visits from 120 different countries and are currently averaging over 1,500 site visits per week. We truly believe that this is a resource that can be used to help um, guide patients to genome-directed therapies through clinical trials. This is also a worldwide collaboration. Um, we have over 40 different contributors from 13 different institutions in six different countries around the world. The knowledge is powerful, and we hope to share our expertise and the expertise of others um, with everyone. I really thank you again for your time and attention. We're very excited to be here as part of Health Data Palooza and excited to answer any questions in the hallways throughout the conference.